Well, Bill Warren, uh, did you enlist or were you drafted? Oh, like everybody, we were all drafted. <laughs> and were you drafted into your, in the Army Air Corps? I was drafted into the U.S. Army, and I took qualifications and changed, changed the Air Force. Where did you do your basic training then? Yeah, from all places, Miami Beach, Florida, in a hotel. Nice. I was one of the lucky ones. And what uh, military position were they training I, for? I was a flight engineer on a B-24 Liberator, 10 men crew. And when did you go overseas? Oh, uh, 40, 45, I went to for 45. To Napa, New Guinea. New Guinea. So you're in the Pacific Theater. Pacific right? Theater. How many days did you remember it take to get to New Guinea? It was took it? six days. Six days. We flew from Huntington, California, to Hawaii, Hawaii to Canton, Canton to Chihuahua, to Chihuahua to BF, and we were in New Guinea. Did you uh, do all of your service in New Guinea? No, no. We we were out on the jumpers. We went from. Then that we get it up to Clark the Philippines, up to Okinawa, and finally to a little island, ten miles off Okinawa called Aishima. It's unknown except for two things. Or he probably killed her. Right? And World War II ended there. The Japanese peace envoy landed at Aishima, and three Japanese bombers came in white, green crosses. With radio call signals to penetrate, attack one, attack two, attack three. They transferred to Manila, had their talks with MacArthur. He had come back, went back to Japan to a Sunday airfield. That Sunday was a kamikaze field, the last operational field in all of Japan. We got an AP from MacArthur's headquarters. Being in the 23rd, we were in the radar squadron. So we were picked to go immediately to Japan to see if they could airborne the 11th Airborne up there on that limited facility. We landed in that city, Japan, August 28, 1945. 50 Americans who were the first pre occupied Japan. Nobody else was there but us. We destroyed all of the first line fighter planes that were armed and the fuel made the whole plane turn off so we could come in. For two days, three minutes apart, a 100 mile sky train, T-54 is about the limit here for a with a 17 mile pipeline to pump our fuel trucks in. What do you think of B-24? Or the great airplane. It was, they got us there and back. And as a flight engineer, what was your specific role? I was at the airplane that uh, secured the gas tanks, uh, checked all the mechanicals, the electric power units, the hydraulics, the aileron, every all the controls before the pilot got in. And I stood between the two pilot and pilot and everybody. How many? Uh... And talked to the gunner. Everybody with the gunner. So would you be on uh, you you'd be on the plane on the missions as well? Oh yeah. How many missions did you do? Fifteen. Fifteen? With with Tom Jabbing and shipping up and down the you know, the area. Did you have any uh, confirmed uh, sinking of any ships? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll show you uh, when we landed at City, I took this flag, this first flag down. I got that on August 28th, 1945. Wow. Feel that, that's the real thing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That was my war shooting here. What, what memory sticks out to you the most during your service? We could surrender to Japan, was above all else, uh, being there first it was really something. This is a short story. That's the whole crew, every crew member that we flew together with in uh, the Fifth Air Force. Every man that's on there, there's 10 men in the crew. And that's all the islands that we occupied and the men I flew with all the day.
very cool. When did you uh, come back from the service to the state? I got back to the Wall Street, I got back on Marmarson Day, November 11th, 1945. We were in the same field, we took off from This was our tail and sent the Seahawks. It was painted on our, our tail. Would you wear this around your back? Oh, yeah. There's a story to this. Every day in our company street, this young girl would come down, some of the pineapples and the fruit, said she dressed nothing but rags. So I got to know her after a while, and I said, I'll make you a deal. I'll dress you and your family if you make 10 scars for my crew. So I got a parachute. She made them, brought it down. So that's, that's how we're sitting. The reason for this is Olympic, the invasion, upcoming invasion of Japan, we were staying at number one airplane because we had radar. The only, only radar group in 44 miles. And we were scheduled to be first. Olympia, we were going to invade Ryukyu on November 1st. We were going to invade Tokyo on April 1st. That's what we call the uh, Cornet. So that's a lot of history. So now what plane was better, the B-24 or the B-17? Well, they both did their job. The B-17 was a roller airplane that wasn't as good. We had far heavier range. We had 2,500 miles, and we had 8,000 pounds of power. But the range, we could fly 13 and a half hours, yeah, which, uh, you know, that's a long haul. Wow. So, so we weighed 72,000 pounds of takeoff, 8,000 pounds of power, and 32,000 empty. So we was quite a great airplane. Four made one every hour. Wow. We built 300,000 airplanes. Or two, ten times more than Germany, Japan, and everybody else combined. What do you think of Honor Flight? Oh, that was a great experience. Great experience. One thing about they built it too late, too many. My brother, he was almost killed in the battle of the world. He never got to see it. Just too late. Right? Too few of his stuff. Before the 18 I was 18, but now I went in. It was overseas five years. Wow. Um, yeah. But in Korea, I was an air rescue. That's when you fly out and pick them out of the ocean. Yeah. So the F-16. You did? Yeah, we got crew in the back. And we had 20 missions on that. We picked up literally 7,000 out here in two and a half years. When did you retire? Well, I just got this journey after the Korean War in 46. 46? Yeah. Early. 